Hey guys, Rorius here. Welcome back to Not For Broadcast. I'm so eager to get into this next broadcast. Because, uh... <laughs> it's, uh... It's gonna be spicy, I think. <laughs> How are things at home? <laughs> I've been living in a paradise ever since you did. Do, 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 do. Day 232, going up to. That was the previous day. Day 242, a ladder worth climbing. Oh. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon in summer. With you and Sam making the most of both kids being out of the house. You bang your head coming out of the cupboard with the last two slices of homemade cake. It used to be much easier when you could store things in the pantry. It's rare for you... I see. It's rare for you and Sam to actually get to finish sweet things in this house and you savor every moment. Just as you take your last bite, you hear the sound of the front door slamming. That'll be Charlie coming uh, back, back from the go-getters. You can hear him practically running to come find you, and he's grinning from ear to ear when he finally does. I have some really big news! You and Sam play along, sitting attentively with bated breath. Ready? Charlie asks, as you both nod enthusiastically. With a flourish, he reveals a new badge from his pocket, and proudly presents it to you, with, to you both to examine, as he announces, As of today, I'm a member of the first tier of Cohesion Cadets. There's way more stuff I'm going to be doing. And I'll be working from working some weekends, but it's really cool. Sam congratulates Charlie as you can't help but frown. This seems a big step for, for up for teenagers. You and Sam grin back at your son. You're thrilled that he's happy and doing well. Let's just let's just be happy for him. Although I do feel like like hmm, working weekends. He's a 14 year old. A sign of things to come. Shopping. Something that's always seemed so tedious before the sanctions has become even more of a chore now. Oh. You managed to get almost everything you need for the family this evening, but you'll have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a queue to leave the car park, though it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully whatever's causing it won't be long. As the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. A friendly looking man in an advance uniform, CCO, emblazoned on a number of plates on it, approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. You roll it down. Good evening, nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if I could see your team membership card, please. Weren't these, weren't these cards supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, oh, that's not a problem. We've got forms with us right here, and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man gestures to his colleague behind him. A young woman in a similar uniform. She clearly received the short end of the stick and is stuck with the paperwork. Well, I suppose I might as well, as you're here. Let's just do it. He gestures for his colleague to come over and she quickly takes down your personal information, employment history, and also that of your family. There's quite a bit more than you were expecting and the level of detail required is a little surprising too. Still, a few minutes later you're done. With the promise of your very own team membership card wiggling its- sorry, winging its way <laughs> to your- to you soon. Saves you having to stop in the queue next time. Yep, that's all great, thanks! Don't forget to keep your eye out for the new team lottery starting up soon. Loads of great benefits to be won! You have a nice day now! The man is all smiles as he pats the bonnet of your- of your car and waves you off. So are these cards mandatory now? <laughs> it's- Free prizes for just having a card, fantastic! <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the thing, is like, I feel like, an invitation worth ignoring? I feel like, if I was in this scenario, I would be acting this way, but like, like the positive responses would be the way that I would outwardly act to all the people, you know, the advanced people, but like, inside I'm like... Hmm... <laughs> like, I'm not sure about this. It's a Saturday, one of your few days off, and you made the most of it. But as late afternoon draws on, the invitation sits pinned to the fridge, staring accusingly at you. The Channel One Gala is a mandatory work event, Bozeman was very quick to tell you. Also, don't you dare be late. Probably not wise to risk Bozeman's wrath, better go. You already missed your anniversary this year, you're not giving up another Saturday. You know what? I'm gonna miss it. Bozeman is certainly not going to be happy, but then Bozeman wouldn't be happy if he was m made king of the same 
<laughs> but then Bozeman wouldn't be happy if he was made king the same day he won the lottery. But that's not your problem. Not right now, anyway. You're entitled to your time off, and you're damn well going to t make the most of it. The consequences will be Monday's problem. <laughs> I didn't... Seemingly, that didn't seem to affect Sam's opinion of me, which is unfortunate, because that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping Sam would be like, oh, you're going to spend the day with me. Nope. <laughs> I feel selfish now. Day 296, the heat wave. Ah, here it is. This event, this thing is going to play a, play a role now. Oh, I don't have a phone. Oh dear. Hey, we're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just slapped on their wax wing. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Oh. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe from people like you, Rock. Why? She was alive. Oh, what the heck? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I don't understand this new mechanic yet. Can I restart? <laughs> the World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their tenth week. In a statement from Team Headquarters, I don't know what the difference is between those two. Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. The World Council should make no mistake. This blockade and the illegal sanctions it seeks to enforce are an act of war and will be treated as such. Any incursion, however slight, into our territory will be met with swift and deadly force. You have been warned. Three's a crowd. It seems the celebrity wedding of the decade might have been a touch busier than expected. In a photo leak today, it appears the union of football star Johnny Amsleaves and his bride, Tiffany Lamour, may have had a few uninvited guests. Hundreds lined the street to celebrate with the happy couple. Eyewitnesses say a cheer went up as the blushing bride passed by in her carriage, shaped like a bacon sandwich, which is said to be either a protest against the meat industry or a mix-up at the carriage factory. <laughs> in it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked Doesn't up like to choose. what Team HQ are describing These are all the same. unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Flood hearted, a shocking inspection of Remington Smith's new flood factory has revealed health concerns that could leave the groundbreaking facility's future in doubt. After the public's lukewarm response to the industrial plant, the troubling report that found a possible long term risk to shop floor workers could be the final nail in the coffin. CEO Sophia Rimington, however, was optimistic that her employees would remain loyal. And judging by these pictures, she may be right, as workers seem to be ignoring the warnings and returning to work. It looks like it's business as usual in Grizzleford. Perhaps the reports are unfounded, or perhaps, I feel like dirty Jacques and Ballet, plants are just simply <laughs> worth the risk. Leaders shipping out. The trap scientists undertaking a bold escape from Dante's taint have revealed which of their two erstwhile leaders will spearhead their journey to freedom. While throughout their careers it's been clear that Doctors Wong and Swarthmore oh. and have worked best together, it seems one of them is now going to be taking a back seat. Ingrid has always been the tempered coolant to David's flagellized metal, so it's no surprise that with the unexpected challenges the team have faced, they chose her methodical and effective approach to getting the team home safely. Critics, however, <laughs> have speculated that her strategy may be delayed as her name takes much longer to say. <laughs> Life during wartime, 
as if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders. Internal problems are growing for the government as radical activist group Disrupt caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protests, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advanced have yet to comment. The reckless fire will certainly be remembered by all those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are Disrupt and what exactly do they want? Other than a new box of matches, of course. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well Why did as go red one for of the contenders there? in this year's Feline Football Championship and a proud owner. That's all up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, interference, no! <laughs> Damn it. Ah! But first tonight, our team oh. of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country. Okay, wait, no, 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 no. I need to, I need to hear what he said at the start. I'll skip back to this part, but I needed to hear what he said at the start because I missed how to do that. Let's just restart. Oh, that's how it works. Okay. See, I missed I missed the thing about aiming. Okay. That's better. Hey, we're working on it. I had to go back to the like decision stuff. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. I just took out the advance ad, replaced it with. We'll spearhead their journey to freedom. While throughout fist. their careers, it's been clear that doctors Wong and Swartz, Borg and Horgansford have worked best together. <laughs> Such a hard it seems one to of say. them is now good. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating. Yeah, it was red suddenly. As well as Weird. one of the contenders in this year's feline football championship and a proud owner. That's all up on tonight's National Nightly News. Bastarding fan turning itself off for no reason. I was warned about that. But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this unprecedented <laughs> hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns of the University of Princeford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful. Isn't Jerry. it? My eyelids are sweating. Eyelids? And you're part of a team carrying out a oh. study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, we want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. Why did it go red for a second? I'm very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> so tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Jaime, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdotes. Oh, here we go! And, ha, as expected, everything oh my God. is absolutely... This should be zero interference. This 
This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is fine, so... Yeah. Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should <laughs> Let's be take that out, then. these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> We need to evolve gills within 40 years. You look thirsty. Here it just says, shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go. Shit, Much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. It's running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Uh, enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for... Don't forget about that pesky power button. We claim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be, that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, let's over attempting. to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. Oopsies. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor mm -hmm. at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. Ah. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurants. Ooh, swanky. Mm -hmm. I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the six formers, when the headmaster came and found me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous uh. stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them in tactfully collection. Oh! How unexpected. <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary. Mr. <laughs> Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe. There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Or would you like to hear one? No, thank you. Gary, when you signed up for Whoa. team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. It's coming. It's inspiration. And it's delicious. Mm. Right you are. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah, yeah. This big one's my favourite. See how it's fibrous and really lovely texture. <laughs> Would oh my you God. encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? Uh, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, there. Jeremy. Back Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. <laughs> and finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick <laughs> Bannon, <laughs> who's gone mind. to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's 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 it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate. You've lived here your whole life. How would you put up with the sting? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. So tell that look at him. Proud as fuck. Do you know what it's like, son? Being the second smelliest town? No, I don't. Second smelliest town. Arse, minster. I smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? <laughs> what, not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, so 
Right, the good people from Rillington Swiss came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flage factory. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. Think not affect your life in every way, Barry. I mean, perhaps if you're filling in a tax return or completing the physical act of love. <laughs> it's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. Oh my god. So, oh, what, 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 I should really um, uh, oh, learn to use the middle mouse for that. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> Damn it. Now, folk are saying something about <laughs> the like... line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience. <laughs> he's like, he's like, <laughs> do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, this stinking old tramp? <laughs> oh, the next recording is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. I've got a weird problem with a song of my life. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Bannon, and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh my god, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that, that'll be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and the I... on we. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. No, no, Dotty. Was that you? <laughs> Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. With a naval blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public What's who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Okay. <sighs> this has been weirdly stressful. I don't care. It's been this that's been the hardest part. It's 200 fucking degrees in here, and I can't do this anymore. I say this every Friday. I've done something. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still. Ouch. That's okay. We can't force you to do it, but it would make me and the powers that be very happy if you just comply. That's what I'm talking about? Cat football? We should be doing an interview with the war minister, or a report from Grantham Downs. Even the weather would be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like... My the... Exactly, which is wrong. Special Even tape. should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot! Please take your seats as quickly as you can. <laughs> I shouldn't need to sit there. I can't do this anymore, Jenny. I've had enough. That's it. This is just Ten seconds! Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five fucking... Five! Four! Three! Welcome back to, to the National Nightly News. Welcome with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later... We'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first calf football team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election and it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. 
we're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to lead children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, then let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <laughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really good for my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. Do people tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me, and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. <laughs> and how much success have you had? <laughs> so we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway <laughs> shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. <laughs> well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. What would it be like to have a pair of tits? <laughs> Could you? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's very hot. What was I thinking? That you're a team fuck puppet? No. Or a sellout cunt? <laughs> Apologies. Just reminded that he can't help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, we're we'll trying not to. No, laugh no. half. What did I say before the show? And it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I didn't say <laughs> Well, I didn't say we that. may have to end that now, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about! We demand respect! <laughs> ah, yes, well, later, I'll oh. be talking to Professor Punky, a ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't! Let go! <laughs> Not you! And hand him at once! Oh, enough! That's enough! <laughs> That's enough! <laughs> enough! Oh. What are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. <laughs> you in the broadcast centre. Bozeman's little scapegoat. You listen to me. You cut to the ass before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person <laughs> in this studio. <laughs> I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when you used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and... Bloody cat football! We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, he stopped her hiccups. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my studio! Go on now, go. Before I change my mind. Before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Jenny, lock. The doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now. <laughs> Good. Yes. Now. Good. Right. You're in the broadcast centre. Yep. You're in the broadcast. Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Yep, yep. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines. And when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. All of upstairs appreciate there may be lives at stake. They want you to know the official policy of this channel is that we do not negotiate with terrorists. Just think before you act. One-sided, over now, we're going to show the other side for 
for a bit of fucking balance. Like the good old days. Alex, play the fucking tape. I don't want to hurt any of you. If I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start. Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you made the right call. Reset the system for the third segment. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. Uh, they are, they're A+. Plus. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> it's him, yep. How long? Yeah, How long? 17 seconds. And the studio doors are all still locked? Yes. So what now? I don't know. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. I had speech, look. But this, this was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. It was supposed to be your God. day off. Please, uh, don't do any more stupid things today. Please, don't do any more stupid How long? Things today. How long, Jenny? How long? You're already live. You're already live. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Joining me unexpectedly, for I very much I imagine will be my last broadcast, oh, are two new guests. Lost. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News Jenny and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, what's your name? Andy. What's your name? Andy's a policeman. Only, Andy. we don't call him that anymore. Only He's a community cohesion oh, officer. Oh, I see. He's so they're all officer. called that. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? I don't want to be on the news, Jeremy. That's perfectly understandable. We'd want to do this. We'd want to do this. Jenny. Jenny. Why did you join the National Miami News team? Why did you join the National Miami News I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? Yes, but why the National this program? Nightly the News. National Nightly it was the news everyone trusted. It was. It was, was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Is there something there else you'd rather discuss? There's a great big Alan James sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that fit came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. It's about the message, not the messenger. Know. <laughs> no. I didn't know. No. The people I met were with. No. He wasn't there. <laughs> I, I didn't know sorry. it was Alan James. I'm sorry. I but seriously. I'm sorry. Alan. Seriously. King James, you're flushing your life down the toilet. For... God, I love you, Jeremy, but I love you, Jeremy. He's a good speaker. He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. He's popular in the country. Can't right. Can't right. Look, forget Alan James. 
There is still something deeply wrong. There is still something and you know it, Jenny. Wrong. And you know it, Andy. And you know it, Jenny. And you, you, you are home. Andy. You know it too. And you, you are home. Meanwhile, you know it too. I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of I'm shit. Guest. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression, and the news isn't saying anything. <laughs> We're not saying anything. Says who? I'm fucking dead. What are all those scientists working on at Grantham Downs? What are they testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations? Just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards. Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? Then why do you need these? Not really help when it's over at gunpoint, is it, Andy? <laughs> Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it. And you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? Well, I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy. Or I'll force it down your fucking throat. <laughs> Holy Go shit. Go on. Really? Eat it. <laughs> Eat it, you fucking Jeremy, stop. We will kill you. Please, don't make me watch that. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can put the card down now. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. Uh -oh. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so seductive. <laughs> so I understand that. Cutting it like a rig before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high. Again, if you care. Shouldn't someone ask advance how they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of, who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie, for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. <laughs> That's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast from the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him, but I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ is also fucking pointless. Christ is also fucking pointless. I was gonna quit tonight. Take a holiday. Try something else. Out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never try. I. I. I loved the news. I loved And now, well. God, Jeremy, don't. I've tried my best to be honest with you. But this just isn't the news anymore. And I'm sorry. I've lost this fight. I've let you down. Please, we can't show this cut to the ads. My name's Jim Donald. Do it now. If you can. Somehow. And I envy you. Have a peaceful night. Jeremy! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> what have I done? Oh my god! <laughs> I just got the achievements! A peaceful night and the man behind the hood. Oh, but the man under the hood or whatever it was. <laughs> the donation. Sorry, the Donaldson situation has been resolved. I, I had a feeling that was going to happen. I, I need to put a trigger warning at the start of this episode. And there was a trigger warning at the start of the game. All offensive words were censored. More interference than news.
<laughs> More interference than news. A breathtakingly good edit. You played one advert too late. <laughs> It'll be the last advert. Advance angered by content. Valve's excellent, excellently handled. <laughs> Am I gonna be fired? <laughs> Apparently I got a bonus though. Sometimes splurging. I'm back to sometimes splurging again. <laughs> Apparently these two went down, these two went up. It's because I played these ones, these tapes. But I... I would have played, I think, this one? No, this one as well, but... I was asked to play the... the special... tape. <laughs> I broke the heart of the Channel 1 News team. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was not broadcast. I, I've got to see what the next episode is now. But damn it! Oh, I want to keep playing, but I can't. I'm out of time for today. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, we'll see what happens in the next episode, I suppose. <laughs> if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next episode of Not For Broadcast.